Good morning, folks. You're going to notice that the SDO satellite had a bit of a rough afternoon and evening, taking some shaking that Helio Viewer actually does a fair job stabilizing. During that event, the sun ramped up into some solar flare production that finally hit M-Class, so let's try to get a closer look over at spaceweathernews.com. The flares were confined to the umbral magnetic fields of the large departing sunspot on the right, and while the snaps and flashes should catch your attention, there is not strong coronal rippling or any denser segments of plasma ejecta, at least not that we can see. Region turning towards the limb there with the pop. When we come and take a look at the coronagraphs, we do see the burst heading out to the right. Looks like it will miss Earth, and it's small. And honestly, folks, the top left CME Genesis evades proper analysis, but it too will miss Earth. Let's get a quick look at that SDO trouble time with the GOES Solar X-ray Imager. This is what we use when SDO goes down. While not as clear as the SDO, we can certainly tell that nothing major happened during the glitches there, but for the ramp up to the action on the right side. Big sunspot is departing now. That's why the Earth facing quiet took her foot off the sunspot's throat and let him rip a couple flares as he said goodbye. Let's take a look at the solar wind. I think indeed that was a combined CME and Corona hole impact, but remember we expected a second stream from this Corona hole and that hasn't impacted yet. Magnetic disruptions are waning now, and if the stream out of the northern Corona hole is going to hit us, it would likely be today. Eyes open. Well, folks, according to our Twitter post on the 16th, it was to be the 19th when the Quake Watch peaked back up into magnitude 6 range, but it took a whole extra day. Not often we're that far off, but on the 20th, 6 pointer in Vanuatu. Next, folks, there's no link for this one because it comes from in house. I pulled every magnitude 7 earthquake from the USGS archives for just the last 20 years, seeing about how many we're getting a year and also where we are now, just over halfway through 2016. The lowest yearly total was 11 such events, and we've had 7 so far, so as a low boundary, we should see at least 4 magnitude 7 earthquakes throughout the rest of the year, but likely more. We're actually running around average, maybe a touch below, and so expecting another 5 to 9 magnitude 7 quakes the rest of the year is most likely, with as many as 12 to 14 possible if we match the highest half-year total in this stretch. Just a little FYI. Then this. Folks, this occurred two afternoons ago as the geomagnetic storm cropped up. Flashes down the street caught their attention, but in looking ahead, they nearly missed what happened right beside them. Incredible images there. We had electrical explosions, fires, and a number of telecom and power issues during that storm. That is the primary concern from space weather, along with the health risks. More on those health risks can be found at our website, but today we're featuring last night's upload, episode 58 of Deeper Look on energy from space and its effect on clouds. Become a member at that button on the left there. Throw your search for good information a little life raft. I'd like to remind everyone that the third series of Observing the Frontier will come to Albuquerque in early April 2017. We'd love to see you out there, and the lineup is top-notch as always. We've got some weather coming up, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 3.35 a.m. at the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.